Welcome to Matt Bayeski YouTube channel. It's been a very interesting few months and um, I'm recognizing more and more the so-called spiritual movement is becoming more toxic every day. I made a video a couple of days ago with regards to just a, it was just a general conversation which um, was it led on to the point of uh, kindness really and um, who who I believed is important to um, follow which is my guides my my intuition my spirit family or family of the spirit world that are leading me to their family so I kind of made a video of that it wasn't a video that I was um, uh, trying to show off or be big-headed um, I do a lot of work behind the scenes that nobody knows anything about through the whole of the year I'm uh, uh, an advocate of uh, support to people who uh, have nothing, who are uh, on their backside because something's really bad's happened. If, if I'm led to be there, I'm gonna help them in any way I can, support of my voice, my words, my time, and sometimes um, if I've got enough cash uh, from the business, I will help people. So I help people in so many different ways. So I made a video and it was more, the actual video was just having a general conversation and then it was led on, it kind of led on to, um, my thoughts in my head, which was so many people run for cancer research, so many people run for different charities. And then when you, you know, or, or what, what's the other one? Children in need and all of these. And, and in my head, I'm thinking we need to be, we need to discern what's right and, and what's, what's wrong in this world. And most people just jump on board of something huge right they jump on you know if you if you want to be popular if you want everybody to know then then run for cancer and wear this pink um ribbon or or the 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 teddy bear with the one eye which is of course most of you know is sinister but you know all of these things and then the money goes to the the, the ceos who are making hundreds of thousands a year and 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 the money itself and you can look at this in oxfam if you if you give one pound to oxfam you'll see that after all um everybody takes their cut wages and all of these things for buildings it ends up being i don't know a few pence okay so in in my head i, I had got this thought about that and then it led on to a story now i have literally probably more stories about gifting than anybody else that I know that I've come across, right? Because I gift every day. No, I, I, I gift more than every day because if you add up how many gifts, it's a hundred times a day sometimes. It's crazy. But I do it out of love, right? What do I need money for? I don't really need it. I've got my place. I'm happy. I don't need anything. So I, well, what's the point having the cash in the bank? Just give it banks. I don't believe in them. So I just share and help like we, like we all do. So I, um, once somebody said pro rata, and I said, what does that mean? He says, well, if I'm a billionaire and I give somebody a uh, hundred thousand, it's like you, Mark, giving somebody um, uh, five euros. And I went, oh, but somebody somebody said to me the other day, that's not pro rata. I went, okay, well, maybe you didn't know. But what I, what I mean by that, what I mean is that, you know, when I had nothing, I gave everything. And now I've got a bit more money because my business is doing well because people like my products. I'm able to give the equal. So it's still the same. Anyway, cut a long story short, I'm just giving a conversation about uh, the spirit world because it kicked into my head and about how amazing the spirit world is. And I've mentioned it before. You might not know about it, but for some reason, um, while I was in Bali, um, I normally go to Bali for a number of reasons, right? I save my money up, I go to Bali, and I sit there and write my book. So I've got two books now that I should have finished, but I haven't because I've been able to go to Bali. But when I'm sat in Bali, I'm writing, um, the last one was Seeing the Invisible, and that just fl flowed out. It was incredible. The book, I think, I haven't read it, but people say it's really good. <laughs> so, right, so I'm, I'm, sat there and this thought comes to me. If you've read any of my books, this is what happens. It's a thought, it just comes into my mind. So a thought is an image, right? So I got this image of uh, Ganesh, right? Ganesh is um, a, 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 um, a god, 
right? So it's basically half man, half elephant. So, but the Ganesh I was looking at was wood. And what I could see was, oh, that's my Ganesh that I uh, saved up for and bought. And he's a big, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. He's a big carving. It's beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful carvings in the world. Carved by an amazing carver. Anyway, cut a long story short, this particular piece was owned by this guy called Tom. Tom. I don't even know who he is then. Uh, I just saw it in ballet as I was driving past and years goes by and I'm, I wonder if it's still there. So I ring up um, uh, Wyan. I said, Wyan's a friend of mine over there. I said, Wyan, do you remember that beautiful sculpture in Changu? And he said, yeah. I said, is it still in that like kind of, it was like, it wasn't really a shop. It was a hut and it was right at the back and it was hardly out in there. But there was this Ganesh and it was calling men. He said, I'll go and find out. So he goes and finds out and he says, yeah, it's still available. I said, do you think you'd be able to send it to, to Spain if I pay for him to wrap it? And, and he says, yeah, his family, one of his family members, because he married a, a Balinese, uh, one of his family members uh, has a, a cargo shipping. Oh, well, yeah. Anyway, it got here, right? Anyway, so I'm there, right? And I'm seeing, I'm, I'm sat down seeing this Ganesh. <clears throat> and then I thought about, Tom, that I'd never seen before, <clears throat> just spoke to him on the phone. I actually, never spoke to him on the phone. We just uh, text. And for some reason, he kept coming up in my thoughts, and I had no idea why. Now, why I said why I did this, I don't know. But um, it was on my WhatsApp, and I said I found him uh, um, because while well, the correspondence, I found him. Right, I, I must have typed in Ganesh, and then it came up. I went, "Hello, Tom." Are you are you in ballet? And he says, Yeah, I am. I said, Can we meet for a coffee? I don't normally do this. And he said, That would be wonderful. So we made an arrangements to meet for a coffee. No idea why. He hadn't got anything that that I I wanted because I I bought the one thing that I wanted off him. Uh, but then in my mind I was saying, Oh well, he was a nice guy. I should be saying thank you and go and say thank you for. Right, so I'm thinking in my mind, oh, well, it's probably because I, I need to go and thank him for the, the wonderful thing he did and, and how he shipped it and he was so kind and caring. So that kind of made sense. So I made an appointment to see him and it was at, on a back street, right? It took me ages to find. I found it, he sent me a pin. So he gets there, I get, we, I, I get there on my motorbike and he turns up, right, in his tracksuit. And I went, oh, I expected somebody older. <laughs> He's a young lad, he shook his hand, fluent in Balinese. I, I gotta take my hat off to you, mate. I, I can only say two words, but wow, right? The guy studied uh, to learn, but he speaks fluent Balinese, okay? Well, he's bound to do his, his wife's Balinese, so <laughs> be it, be difficult otherwise, eh? So anyway, he opens these two doors of this like kind of gate, and then he shuts it behind him, and then all of a sudden a dog comes up to me and starts licking me. I went, oh, no, dog, eh? I said, is this your dog? He said, yeah, that's my dog. Then all of a sudden, two more came. I said, wow, you got three dogs? He said, yeah, that's another two more. And then all of a sudden, we're walking on the grass, and uh, there's some there's some cow d dung there. I went, cow dung? Like, oh, there's a cow over there. And it's kind of a long, long stretch of, of grass, with, with um, trees and um, actually quite nice. And um, at the back, they were like a construction. So I'm walking towards it. I said, what's going on here, Tom? He says, well, he says, you know how it is. I said, no, how is it? He says, well, one dog became a stray because it might have been beaten or they were gonna kill it and eat it or whatever. And I'm like, what, you, you've taken all these dogs in and now all of a sudden, there's like 20 odd dogs everywhere. And there's two cows over there. And so he tells me the story about everything and every dog. And he talks to me about the, 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 this is how beautiful this is. He talks to me about every dog's personality. And when he talks about them, he talks about them, not just, he talks about them with love and compassion. 
right? So I'm looking and I'm saying, oh, what, what's that there? What are them? And he says, oh, they're coconut shies. We, we, we like to give coconuts to, you know, them. And, and then he, he started, he started talking a bit more. And then I started to sense something and feel something inside me. And I'm realizing now I know why I'm here. There's a reason why I'm here. Uh, and it's for the dogs, I think, but I'm not sure just yet. So somebody brought me here and he's telling me all these stories and I'm, I'm listening really and he's showing me that we have to sometimes separate this dog with this dog and sometimes we try and find homes for him and blah, blah, blah. He says, but, you know, and I said, Tom, uh, I mean, he's not dressed in Armani or anything, right? He's like me, dresses like, it's kind of scruffy like I do, right? In my silly tops and my, and my old knackered pants and like, just, just normal folk. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm a businessman as well, right? I've been in business all my life. I know straight away adding up that you've got 20 odd dogs, two cows, that is a lot of money. That's a lot of money you need to find every month to feed these animals well. And I'm looking at all the animals and I'm thinking, they're not bad at all. They're not skinny. And, and I said, I said, I'm not being funny, here, but I, how, how, do you, how do you manage to feed all these animals? thinking he's got a charity, no charity, nothing. And I'm like, anyway, it ends up that he opens up and says, well, he said, I, I, you know, I, 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 I know many rich people, but for some reason, we don't really get much from any of them at all. Never even, <clears throat> he said, I don't really ask, you know, but the vet, the vet has been really kind. And I went, the vet? He said, yeah, the vet. I said, what, you mean a vet has been feeding the ant? He says, yeah. And I'm saying like, w w really? And I said, I, he says, well, you know, we, we, we've been paying for them, but it's been very difficult because of the lockdown. Okay, I get it. It's like, I, I totally get it. So how have you managed? And he says, well, he says, you know, we've, we, we've kind of, and it was hard for him to say, but you know, they're on borrowed times. So what I didn't tell you is that before I left, I I drew some money out and it was quite a lot of money and I don't know why I drew it out because there was no need to draw it out because I'd got some money in Bali in my bank account there, but I drew some money out and I thought, what am I taking this for? I had no idea. And then when I'm in there, it made sense. Now I understand. So I said to him straight away without even thinking, I just said, can we meet at the vets tomorrow? Oh, it was next day, so he says, why? I said, well, I just wanna maybe try and help somehow. So we end up going there, uh, we're all there. Wyan took, took me in the cags and I was just about to set off to go home, back to um, Spain, and um, sat down and listened and, and I said, can I have a look at all the, the, the bills? So I looked at all the bills and he said, could you add it all up, add it all up? And I said, how much is six months food? For the dogs so he worked out six months food you know so I said well I'll buy six months food and I'll pay for these few years of, of food so I got all my money out and 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 paid it uh, I had I, it was some of it was in euros so I said well look you're gonna have to deal with that and change it so I just gave that and and I went right so I told this story right because the story was not about that per se, but it was about how amazing spirit got me to go to the bank, draw some money out, went to Bali. Didn't know why I was going to Bali per se. I just had to go and it wasn't that necessary. I went to buy some tops, but it wasn't that necessary. And I, I didn't finish any of the books at that time. So it wasn't that necessary, but I was pulled to go there. And then I got this thought in my mind all the time about this guy that I'd never met before, that I bought a sculpture off, pulled to ring him up, rang him up, we met, and all of this made sense. So I left, and as soon as I left, how do I explain it? Imagine when you don't, have you ever felt this before? When you've gone to the top of the stairs of your house, or you've walked into a room and all of a sudden you don't know why you've walked into that room. And there's a, you know, you know you, you've forgot something. You know you want to say something, but it's just gone out of your mind. Well, imagine that hitting you every few hours all the time, right? 
I, I need to call this guy. I need to see him. I don't know why. Right? So that is how spirit connects with me. That's how I understand it. So wherever I've been in the world, if it's, um, if you've read my book, I, I went on the Santiago de Compostela. I didn't want to go on that walk. I don't want to walk for days. I don't want to sleep in dormitories. I don't want to do that. I don't, I, I feel as if I've done all of that years ago. And why am I going? And then when at three o'clock in the morning, I'm out in the freezing cold, pitch black. And then all of a sudden I know why I've been pulled there to help a girl move back into the light who was trapped in between two worlds and so on. I've got tons and tons and tons of stories of, of how spirit has led me to places where I, I literally, I, I didn't really want to go. I had no reason to go, but when they're calling you, you go. It just, you just, you go, no, you just go. You look back and think, well, you could have said no. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't actually say it. Even though I say, why do you do this to me? Not about the money, but like at four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, it's freezing cold. I have nowhere to sleep. And and I and like, why are you doing this? And then afterwards you look back and say, now I understand. So my story, my life, my journey is a very individual one. But I guess the moral of this story is when I told this story, I had um, about 30 messages in box. They're always weak messages. They're all um, uh, two-faced messages. They're always about spiritual people who are angry about what I've said. And they shared it on their walls. And I knew it was about me because it was so quick to see. And it was like they were saying that, is it gaslighting or I don't know whatever it is. But you know, like you watch these videos on social media and a guy goes up to uh, somebody on the streets and then gives him some money, but films it. They were, they were equating my story to something like that. And it was like, I realized then and there that we all know that we're a reflection of somebody else. And when we get angry, it's a reflection of our weakness. So I'm not saying that these people who said these bad things don't gift and are caring, but it made me realize that, and I said this the other day, to discern is the most important thing in the world now. And if you can't discern what's going on in the world, then you're gonna end up in a really bad place. And one of the things that I, I noticed three years ago, and I said, this is gonna be a major issue, that nobody is actually gonna believe anything anymore. And we are at that place now. So for me, sharing a story about um, this man who is basically a dog sanctuary, an animal sanctuary who looks after animals with his heart, that I shared this story about how powerful spirit is. So the reason why then I, I started sharing it because I told him, I said to him afterwards, it's a good idea to set up uh, an, um, a page to show people what you're doing because it's beautiful and people care. And some people like to help because they can't get out of the house. And if they can watch what you're doing and you're growing and you're helping these doggies, they feel as if they're contributing some way. So I said, people like that. And if people don't want to do, they won't do. So there's no harm. You're not pestering. You're not telling people to do anything. You just put a donate button. So he was like, oh, I'm not so sure. I said, please just do it. So he did it. So I shared it on the wall and somebody uh, sent one, one euro and they were so happy. And I said, thank you with all my heart because that one euro is gonna be contributed towards 100% towards the feed of the animals or the injections or anything that they need so they don't um, have more babies and, and cause more, more um, you know, I, I don't mind them having babies, but when it's overload, it, it gets out of hand. So, you know, I'm a bit mixed thoughts about that. But anyway, so um, I don't know really know why I'm talking like this for why I've said this. I guess maybe if, you know, for me, when people ask me, well, who do you give to? I said, I give to anybody that I feel needs it. And um, I don't give to any big charities because I don't believe in any of them because I've seen what they do and how it's all, it's all paperwork, it's nonsense. So if, if you're ever to gift, then maybe, just maybe, if you feel the pull, you might want to gift to this beautiful sanctuary that 
every day this beautiful man goes to his dogs cleans helps looks after them cuddles them he knows them all by name he's got he knows all by character and he's doing his best this is his best this is as much as he can do the guy is a beautiful soul that's it that's what i share with you today it's a little story and it's a dual story about spirit but it's also a dual story about how some people now are becoming so crazy in their head that they're attacking every single person that they can and that's kind of a shame really because we can see now that we're actually turning this world into a hell because everybody is bitter spiteful angry jealous weak there's so many of them they get it's getting it's getting so much out of hand and you can see right and 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 if i wasn't this the, the person that i am right you can see why people won't say anything won't say anything good because those who claim to be spiritual are attacking people for doing good right listen to my story isn't that a lovely story if i heard that story i'd be going oh my god i'm going to gift a fiver to that that sanctuary that's a lovely story i you know i appreciate true stories like this this isn't bullshit sorry but this isn't bullshit that comes from, uh, look at me on TikTok. I'm giving him uh, this man 50 or a 200 and he starts crying. Look, yeah, yeah, there's a difference. There's a difference. And I do understand that. And if you can't see the difference between somebody who shares this story from walking out of the door, going to a bank for no reason, taking some money out for no reason, for then getting onto a flight for no reason, to bump him, uh, to, to, to meet this guy for no reason, and then to find that there's all these dogs that are in desperate need to be able to be fed because now he's up to his limit on being able to borrow anything else. So somebody was able to contribute. That is a beautiful story. There is no ego in there. I don't care what you think in any way. It's my story and it's true. And I like it because I realized how important my life is and how important my life is to stay healthy and, and to do my best and to, to keep doing videos and sharing everything so that I can help others. So the more good I do, the, the more I work with my oils, the more I work with my incense, the more I work with my crystals every day, the more that people trust that, feel it, heal from it, and then that money then goes to the right places. Okay? Make, makes sense. How can somebody not see the beauty in that? But the problem is most people are, oh, I don't trust it. Oh, there's always some. I, I even remember when I was an auctioneer. When I was an auctioneer and I wasn't into this work, right? My heart broke. It absolutely broke. Why? Because my son came back and said to me, you know, Dad, you're doing all this charity work. I said, yeah, I am. Um, he said, you know, when you, you take all of the, the, this stuff from the from, um for the schools and you sell it and then you go and give a, a check to the headmaster. I said, yeah. He said, you know what granddad said? I said, what? Not my dad, my uh, my ex-wife's um, dad. Do you know what he said? He said to me on the table when I said that my dad's doing some uh, charity work for um, one of the schools, local schools, to get books and computers. He turned around and he says, oh, we won't be doing that for nothing. I won't be doing that for nothing. Hey, okay. you, can you imagine? So this is what we put up with. This is this is this is humanity at its at it, at its worst. We always cynical. We always don't believe. So everything, you know, we see bad. So we don't believe in any good. We have no understanding that there there are good people. Actually, mate, there's millions of good people every day doing good things do you need a hand i'll help you i've got a van i'll help you no no i'll just help you do you need me to fix that i'll help you yeah thousands upon thousands that that's what this world has been built on people helping one another so it is a reflection in a spiritual manner my belief is is a reflection of of these people who say that have no understanding of giving truthfully no understanding of of why we give or or for what reason we give 
To them, it's a business transaction. Well, no, it isn't. When you give from your heart and you don't hold on to its value, that's a gift. And I guarantee you, the ones who pick at you the most, who poke, who judge, are the ones who do things because they're measuring and it's a business transaction. That's why they're the way they are. And I'll leave it there. And if you do feel in any way that you loved the story and you want to contribute to this little charity, and it's not even a charity, it's just him doing his work, trying to help the dogs. I'll leave a link below and have a look. He's just put it up and you can see the doggies and uh, you can see the place that I talk about. Have a great day. And I really appreciate it. Even if you don't, it's a nice story and it's no big deal. It's not important. What you could do is just look at the doggies and send your energy like I do daily and send my energy to Tom and to say thank you for being a rare soul in the world who loves animals like I do and I know you do. Have a great day. Take care.